With the release of Flux Context model, we enter a new era of image editing. However, the downside of this model is the generation time, which can take too much time for some users. So to fix that, we built a custom workflow aimed to decrease the generation time by combining a LoRa and the Tcache node uh, alongside with the upscaling steps. However, many of you suggested to me that there is a Nunchakov version that is more faster than using the GGUF uh, with combined LoRa. So today I will try to show you how you can install this version and how we will test out uh, if it is more accurate and more faster than our previous workflow. Let's start first by installing this ComfyUI Nunchaku. There is a lot of way of doing that using uh, ComfyUI. However, I think I found the best and easy way to install it. And this can be possible using this ComfyUI easy install. You can find this link under my description box. When you open it, you will be directed onto this GitHub link. And here you can uh, scroll down until you found this Windows installation in three steps. Just click here and you will download some file. The downloaded file contains three major files. So make sure to choose the right place on your hard disk. Then unzip it here, create a new folder and name it ConfiUI Nunchaku. After that, enter uh, open up the folder and make sure to open up this ConfiUI Nunchaku. A new command will uh, open up. So uh, as uh, I have already installed everything, it, we are getting this warning. If you don't have uh, this version installed, it will start automatically installing all the necessary nodes, the dependencies, and every uh, needed file in order for you to create a new Comfy UI software. And using this easy install, you will uh, avoid uh, getting uh, missing uh, files or uh, some error to your old Comfy UI which uh, are related to the dependencies. Once it is done, make sure to close it, then make sure to select this extra model path, go to your old Comfy UI root folder, under model, make sure to pass it here. The main reason behind that is this file is gonna automatically uh, upload your uh, old uh, models, LoRa and ControlNet, all the necessary file that we used to work with without necessarily downloading them again. So once you have this uh, model extra path, make sure to copy it, then go to ComfyUI Easy Install, open up this ComfyUI under model, make sure to paste it here. And in order to be sure, I also paste it here, as you can see. So this way you will be able to, you will be able to load your previous models without uh, creating a new copy of them. Okay, once you have everything, make sure to open up this new ConfUI using this run NVIDIA GPU. You can use the right click in order to create a shortcut on your desktop, or you can directly open up this uh, ConfUI here. Okay, now that we installed uh, the ConfUI Nunchaku version, all we need to do is to use the necessary models. To do that, you can also use the link under my description to download the Nunchaku Flux Context Development Model. For uh, RTX uh, 15 series, you need to download this first model. However, for other uh, graphic card users, just uh, use this uh, second model, which is uh, known by SVDQ NT4 flux context model once you download it make sure to go into your old comfy ui root folder enter model then the fusion model and here you can paste it on this uh, subfolder i did the same for the flux one development model since i i wanted to try the this flux model and see the main difference in speed uh, generation you can also use this link here to download for uh, to download the model for flux model uh, make sure to use the second link and to be more specific about this Nushakov version it is using the svd quantization method which is a 4-bit quantization that is more efficient than the ggwf model and this uh, quantization are dedicated to accelerate the hardware of your GPU in order to obtain the same results, however, at more faster speed. Now that we have all the necessary model, just open up this uh, Comfy UI Nunchaku version. Make sure to drag and drop my workflow here. But before we start, I wanted to grab my, your attention here in order to show you the main difference between the old classic Comfy UI. Previously, we used to use this load diffusion model in order to load our model. Then it is combined with the LoRa model uh, loader in order to use the model directly. However, 
for this Nunchaku version, we will need the Nunchaku Flux DIT loader and also the Nunchaku Flux 1 LoRa loader. As you can see here, we have different main parameters, starting with the cache threshold, which is similar to Tcache or wave speed threshold in order to increase the, your generation speed. We have the attention here that is set to Nunchaku FV16, the CPU offload, the device ID, the data type, and also this uh, image to frame mode. I did not play with those parameters and uh, I don't suggest you to change any of, the, of this. So just leave it as the default one. Then here, let's take a look at the workflow. It is the same workflow that I showed on my previous tutorial, at the exception of the load models here. As you can see, I have this Nunchaku Flux DIT loader. I have the dual clip loader. You can also use uh, the Nunchaku clip loader that is uh, implemented for uh, this Nunchaku version. However, the dual clip loader seems to work fine with, uh, with me. We have the load VAE. And we are using the, the, the same classic model that we used for on my last tutorial. Then here our, on the second step, we have to upload our images. As always, we have two main images, one for uh, image editing. And if you need uh, to combine two images, you can only enable this by clicking Ctrl and V. However, I also included a new notes here, which is known as the image and the mask preview. And uh, if you want to do some masking using the embedding tools, you can use directly this image and the mask preview. But for now, just make sure to bypass it in order to use directly the image stitch. And we will see the, the advantage of using this image ma mask later. We have, we still have the conditioning here and uh, here the clip text encode in order for us uh, to add our prompt, which is the main parameter for image editing using clone text models. N now let's jump to the key sampler. We are still using the same parameters, eight steps, CFG of one, Euler as a sampler name, and the simple scheduler. The denoise value is set to one. Then here we have our fine tuning steps. As we saw earlier, uh, the results obtained using uh, the flux uh, models can be uh, very low qualities. So to fix that, I added another step, which is the fine tuning steps using the flux model. And to do that, I also modified this section over here. I add the Nunchaku flux DIT, where I make sure to select the flux one development model. And I also added the Nunchaku Flux uh, for LoRa loader in order to use only 8 steps here. The denoise value is set to 0 0.3. You can increase or decrease this value according to your needs. A lower denoise value will try to keep the, the original image as it is and add some additional uh, details and improvement. A higher denoise value of 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 will try to change your original image in order to obtain more new style. So it will depend on your needs. After that, we will do an upscaling steps here. Let me just enable it using the, uh, the this key sampler. As you can see, we are also using an 8 step and the CFG is set to 1, a Euler is set to sample, and the denoise value. Euler is set uh, as a sampler and the denoise value is set to 0 0.22. And the main difference between this workflow and the other workflow is we are using directly Flux model for upscaling, which will give us a better results comparing to SDXL. On my last workflow, we used SDXL for its speed. However, since we have uh, a boost in speed generation using this Nunchaku version, I decided to directly use this model. And the last group of this workflow is the say the results. Here we have the flux context, or you can call the raw results, the fine-tuned version, and the upscaled version. Okay, now that we have everything, let's test this model, and we will try to see another use case that we didn't saw earlier. Okay, I also built another workflow for a flux model in order to generate images from image or text. It is practically the same workflow and also include the upscaling steps. So the main difference is that we don't have the flux context node here. And to generate the image more easily, I used this method using a load image in order to create a prompt. Then a styler selector node is set to focus enhance and focus sharp in order to enhance the details of my prompting. Then prompt is transferred to this sampler custom advance in order to create uh, the first image. So since the Nunchaku version is more faster, let's try to test it together. 
Okay, we have the first results here, and as you can see, it took only 32 seconds to create the first image over here. For the upscaling process, it took practically 93 seconds in order to obtain this 2K resolution. As you can see, the results is very good and very impressive, especially for the skin here. If you take a closer look here, you can observe the quality enhancement for the skins and also the, the fabrics or the clothes. The same goes for the hair. You can clearly see that we have a major enhancement in image quality. And it is only the, the first time. Technically, the second time will take less time since Comf UI need always to load the models at the first run. So let's do another test with the second run and see the results again. Now we have the results for our second run. And as you can see, it took 14 seconds to create this image, which is a lot faster. However, it, it took more time for the upscaling groups. But the total time remained less important than uh, the previous uh, or the first run. So we can clearly uh, confirm that this Nushaku version of Flux is uh, more faster. Okay, let's jump to our Flux Context workflow. So now let's see what this Flux Context Nushaku version can do. I uploaded this image over here of this cartoon character. Then I ask it for change the style to photorealistic while keeping the details and the poses of the image. Of course, I am using 8 step and CFG value of 1. And the results was also quite shocking. It took me 46 seconds in order to create this first image. As you can see, it managed to create the photorealistic style of the first input image. However, we don't have the stunning details that we need. So we run the second fine-tuning steps, which took 30 seconds, and we managed to get this result. It is quite better, but the resolution is still very low. So we did the upscaling step using also 8 step and CFG of 1, and it took 93 seconds, and the result was quite shocking. As you can see here, if we zoom in, we have more details, and especially for the skins here. It is more realistic and close to a realistic skin. The same goes for the face and the hair. As you can see, we have a lot of details which take the image to another level. I also noticed that uh, the quality of the clothes is also enhanced using this technique. And the total time in order to get this results is 428 seconds. And I am using, uh, this is the second run, which is the fastest run that we can get. So to do more, more testing, we, I decided to show you other use cases using this Flux Context model. The other uh, use cases is the output image. And to use that, make sure to enable this load image. I'm gonna upload a blank image, which I created using Paint. And the main advantage of uh, creating this image is I can control the resolution in order to obtain a good uh, image while using the output uh, technique. So for the first image, I'm going to use the image of this lady over here. And for the prompt, I am I put every detail prompt here. As you can see, for outpainting, I only asked for extend the image wine while keeping the details and poses. Make sure to paste this prompt here. Then let's click. Run. We have another result of another use case, which is the outpainting, and as you can see, it also takes uh, less time compared to previous uh, flux context models, and it is the same for the fine tuning steps. However, for the upscaling, we took practically the same time, and as you can see, the results here is very good. We managed to output this image, and after upscaling, we get uh, another detail enhancement for the skins, the clothes and also the hair. As you can see the before and after, there is a good detailed enhancement. Another example of our painting is the image of this Chinese lady over here. And this is the result we get after using the outpainting technique. As you can see, it is very consistent and the results looks also good. Another uh, test that I did is I used this image of Shanks uh, character from One Piece. I turned it into a realistic image. Then I used the outpainting technique in order to get this result. As you can see, the, the consistency of the character looks good, at the exception of this sword here, which is related to this input image, where the position of the sword is not very clear. So you can also use this context model for outpainting without uh, worrying too much of the results.
Then I also try to do the character consistency using this image of a man. I managed to get these results. The consistency looks the same. The man is holding uh, some type of double nunchaku and the details seems uh, quite impressive. After that, I try to do something new using this image and the mask preview in order to do some in-painting techniques. To do that, all you have to do is enable this image and mask preview. Uh, link this composite into this image and then bypass this image stitch once you have done it make sure to drag your image here then use the right click open in mask editor here you can see that we have the mask editor where you can uh, colorize some part of the image okay the first try that I did is I painted the head then I asked to change the hair color and the main advantage using this technique is the flux context model is gonna only focus on this area this allows us to gain some important uh, time during the generation uh, process type in here change the hair color to golden and we managed to get this results it changed the hair color of this man to golden hair then i did the same thing for the nunchaku i selected this area then I asked for changing the color from orange to golden and the results is quite impressive too it changed not only the, the nunchaku color but also the back color and uh, it is related to prompt adherence so you need to be very accurate when using uh, this in-painting combined with the prompting I also tried uh, to do some in-painting using the picture of this lady over here and I selected the t-shirt I asked for color changing of this t-shirt as you can see it created a new t-shirt and the color uh, selected was black as uh, I asked for uh, the prompt so it is also a very good uh, use case for uh, flux context model and the main advantage using this technique it allows you to gain important time since uh, it is uh, practically two times faster compared to our uh, to my previous workflow which also was two times faster compared to the default workflow provided by flux developers and if we uh, try to compare the generate the total generated time compare with those two workflow i can say that uh, we get practically the same generated time and the main difference remains in the upscaling process on my previous workflow i used an sdxl model which is quite faster compared to flux model in upscaling process however if i use the same model flux model for upscaling process the generated time will be also uh, bigger for my old uh, ultimate uh, workflow so i can say that uh, using this nushaku version is the best solution for low vram users or for uh, someone that is uh, working a lot uh, in on image editing and wants details enhancement or uh, good quality of uh, results okay that's it for today's tutorial if you like this video please push the like button for me subscribe to my channel leave me some comments down below and don't forget to become a patreon member of my patreon page where you can get early access to my workflow I can also build a custom workflow for you and you will also get new information about comfy ui and other uh, new models stay tuned for my next tutorial where, where i will show you how you can create google vao video like using a one vase model so thank you